trying something a little bit different here. I was going to record the previous episode, but the fact that the matter is, I, well, totally forgot, and that's why I'm recording this one instead, because I'm actually spending a little bit of time with ECWA, and the reason why is because in almost a year, they have never defended the tag team championships, and I know some people may say, well, what's the big deal? These two guys... Well, I've been keeping an eye on Brian Danielson for obvious reasons since the start of the season. There are people that I, or personal save, there are people that I have been keeping an eye on for the most part throughout the entirety of this, and Brian Brian Danielson is one of them, but also I like the depth in my developmental so I can bring people up from developmental and not deplete the developmental and Rob Echoes is one of the people, and, well, of course, Billy Bax, because it's never a bad idea to have tag teams in developmental. But the fact of the matter is, Rob Echoes and Billy Bax have yet to compete in October in ECWA, or November in ECWA. Which is absolutely insane, in my opinion, that they've been tag team champions in this company for the entire year and have yet to compete in that promotion at all. It is absolutely insane, in my opinion. So, that is one of the reasons why I'm here in ECWA. Brian Danielson is also Ring of Honor World Champion at the same time. He was MLW World Champion before MLW went out of business. And he spent, uh, I think that's it for world titles this year. Yeah, just Ring of Honor and MLW and just Ring of Honor, MLW, and ECWA. I'm not here to make big changes. I'm not here to do big things. I'm just here because I want to, I want to see new people holding, you know, people that will actually defend the titles holding the ECWA tag team championships because well part of the reason I mean part of the reason is because I was here with the initial intention of having Danielson drop the ECWA title and maybe picking up Brian Danielson in 2024 uh, 2005 and bringing him over to the company you know maybe putting him in developmental because at this point Danielson is so young that if I tried to put him in developmental, maybe I actually could, or maybe sending him to Kai and Tai Dojo for an excursion. You know, there's a number of things that I could do. You know, there's a number of things that I could do, and I just feel like there's the question of what could I do? You know, what can I do? Mm. Like, it's more a question of what can I do than not having anything to do. But it's also sort of him being in a company like this. It is sort of developmental for Brian Danielson because it's sort of the same concept as developmental. You know what I mean? I mean, that just might be my perspective, but, but it is, in my opinion, the bright idea. And I think I may actually run the same thing that I do with, uh, it's tank. No, that I did with CSWF, Iceberg, that's who it is, Iceberg is the guy, but this is the old Memphis 
philosophy, you have a dusty finish that leads to a tag team match. Uh, let's go. Worker Joey Max. Rob Echoes is Justin LaRoche. I didn't want to do it this way, but I guess I have to, to avoid, because the one thing I don't want to do is have people get pissed off at me. What? Oh. You know, the one thing I don't want people to do is have, is get pissed off at me. Because I'm only here temporarily, so I don't really want to piss people off, because there's no reason for me to piss people off if I'm only here temporarily. But that's, like, you know, the main idea is this. What, a four corners match would be two... Um, it is that... Can't actually do it that way. Um, what's it called? That... Uh, Rob Echoes... The reason why I'm here, like I said, is to try and situate certain people in certain positions to give them more, like, of a balanced approach as we hit to head towards me signing them. Because I did this in TNA, and it also gives me an opportunity to distract myself away from WWE. I was a bit more uh, involved with WWE. I mean, with WLW in my old TNA save, where I actually had Michael Shane come over and work a variety of times for WLW, working as the world champion, working with Ta uh, Morishima, Takashi Morishima. You know, and basically, I went that route because... Playbacks, Iceberg, and I honestly don't know who. The other. What was just supposed to be a simple one-on-one -on -one match turned out to be an uncontrolled brawl. But I forget. Oh, Justin LaRoche. So it's Justin and Danny Inferno. Should we do the singles match first? Well, we should, and we're going to throw a Starling and Amazing Red there. Sixty-five. Scoot Andrews. Throw ups. Scoot Andrews. Calling him talented, but someone 
who may never make the big time. I understand this is probably going to ruin the show, but the main point of me being in this position is... The main point in me being in this position is to... Wait. Wait, 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 hold up. So, Iceberg and Scoot Andrews were the tag team. That is... disappointing. So... I think the right choice... Um... I think the right choice would probably be Johnny and Joey having them compete. And taking Tank and Rob Echoes out of the match. That's not going to be a good one. I got rid of... Mm. I got rid of Rob Echo's segment. Or part of it. Of course I did. So that moves Mozart and Tyler Payne instead. And what are we missing? We need a match with storytelling. But what I'm going to do is swap these segments. Because I think it would be better having Amazing Red headline the show than the tag team match with mostly unimportant talent involved in the match. And I think I'm also going to scrap this in favor of this. Because I don't want to ruin the show too, too much as far as ratings. Or I don't want to ruin the company as far as ratings. You know, I, I really don't want to mess with the company as far as ratings and mess up their ratings, but... Well, I mean, since they just got the show, like me doing this is kind of hurting them or could hurt them and I don't want to hurt them. So that's why I added Brian Danielson back to the show. But if you look around, they got a decent roster. I mean, ECWA is one of those companies that fly under the radar, in my opinion. I do believe that they're still in business. I could be wrong, but I do believe that they're still in business. And I do also like the fact that you don't get penalized in companies like ECWA for having matches like I had tonight. 
and Crazy Chaos, which is Justin LaRoche and Danny Inferno, are the new ECWA World Tag Team Champions, which is also ironic because much like Ricky, uh, Rob Echoes being somebody that I was watching, Justin LaRoche is somebody that I've been watching as well because it's just the look that LaRoche gives is somebody that I think could be a big star in WWE. Christopher Daniels did solid carrying Scoot Andrews. And that's why I switched the match to give Amazing Red the main event because I had more faith in Red doing better than I did the match, the Four Corners Tag Team title match. But that's just me. And also pointing out, we didn't get penalized for overuse of the lower card guys. We didn't get penalized for the stuff that I would get penalized for in WWE because the expectation is different in ECWA than it is in WWE, which I thoroughly enjoy. And is also one of the reasons why I have a tendency to jump to these companies because the one thing that I used to do is sign people to companies like ECWA, have them build them up to make it easier for me when I sign them to have them already be established. I haven't done that yet, surprisingly, but that doesn't mean I won't. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this inside look into a, a random promotion from my personal save in WWE 2004 as I'm about to dip from ECWA, but I hope you enjoyed this inside look. And if you want to see more things, more stuff like this, feel free to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, because I'm signing off until next time. I will see you in the next video.